Kenneth Copeland has got to be one of the best examples of all time of one of the worst examples of someone pretending to be a Christian pastor. I am appalled and shocked not only by his behavior, but by his following. People are giving him money, large amounts of money, and it blows me away. And what, what he's done now is now he's saying he can grow your hair. Now Kenneth Copeland can grow your hair. Listen to the latest on this. And yeah, we're going to talk about it today because I think we can learn from this. I think that we can change things if we have a little bit of an analysis of what kind of wackiness is going on. Uh, put your hand on your head like that. Bald spots, I call you gone. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> and yeah, I, listen, if you're a follower of Kenneth Copeland, this is your chance to get out. Right now, right here, today, this is your chance to get out of this. The man, I think, is insane. I don't know what else is going on with him, and I do not say any of those things lightly, not remotely. I'm accountable for my words. I say I think he's insane because I want you to be warned against the insanity of this man and his false teaching and his false prophecy. And we're going to talk about all of this today in my unexpected live stream. It's Sunday afternoon. I don't do live streams on Sunday afternoon. I'm teaching at my church in a couple hours. But I threw this together today because I was like, you know what? I've been sitting on my irritation of Kenneth Copeland for many years. It's just time we just say, let's, as you know, we need the solid Christians online to call out this stuff because it can't just be the world that notices these things. Yeah, this and the world does notice, right? Here's Kenneth Copeland. You guys might remember this. Kenneth Copeland on Inside Edition, given the scary eyes to to the reporter who's asking him questions about his obnoxious wealth, his um, crazy things that he says. And I, I don't have to pull punches with Kenneth Copeland. Listen, the man will be stand condemned before God for all eternity. When he, when he goes into judgment, it's going to be, I mean, he'll be, Suddenly, the, the delusion will come off and he will realize that he was wrong and that he led many others into error as well. He's absolutely a false prophet, absolutely a false prophet. And I'm going to talk about that as well. This is not like, shouldn't be controversial. If this is a surprise to you, then I'm glad you're watching this video because I'm, I'm not just making claims here. I'm going to, I'm going to show you. So let me look again at this hair grow video, though, because my favorite person ever is in this video. Put your hand on your head like that. Okay, I'm, I'm muting the audio. I just want you to watch for a second. Look at this gentleman, the black gentleman here. He's, he's the smartest guy in the room. You'll see him in just a second. And he's like, okay, hair grow. My hair's supposed to grow. I feel like an idiot. Look at him. There he is. Oh, gosh. What is going on? What are we doing? What, where did my wife bring me today? Oh, man. What is this? And listen, if there's more people who are like this gentleman here, you're listening to Kenneth Copeland. You're like, I'm trying to follow along. I just, I just, you, you know something's weird about it. You know that he says things about Jesus. And he says things about the Bible. And many of the things he says are true because he's actually just quoting scripture or repeating things that actual Christians say. Okay. And then he says crazy stuff like this. Put your hand on your head. Hair grow now. And the guy's looking around like, oh, I don't feel right about this. And um, that gentleman right there, I'd love to have a chat with you, brother. Um, time for you to leave. Time for you and your wife to get out. And if it causes some trouble. It's worth it. Yes, Kenneth Copeland, we need more of his followers who are secretly realizing the guy is wacky, but they're intimidated and scared. And I, I do believe that the people who are close to Kenneth Copeland are afraid of him. You see this in the, okay, I study human nature. You just watch people live. Nate, uh, Kenneth Copeland's posture on stage with the other people around him, you can tell the intimidation level's massively high. You don't disagree with the man. You don't challenge him. And he's actually trained people to echo him. You know, there's a there's a, a degree of control that a person exerts in another person's life when the people around him feel they have to echo him. He says something and he stares at them in the eye and then they have to repeat back what the man says. This is like weird. This is creepy, right? This is weird. And 
And I think that we need more people with courage who are in his camp, who are some of his followers, some of the people who've been on stage with him to stand up and be like, you know what? I don't care what the fallout is. This is false teaching and I'm going to be faithful to Christ and not to Kenneth Copeland and his uh, millions of dollars and angry looks. So yeah, be that guy. Be, be the guy who went, eh, no, I'm not doing this. This is weird. And then stand up and tell everyone, tell everyone we need to realize he's a false prophet. And that's what we're going to look at right now. False prophet, Kenneth Copeland. This is going to be a shorter video today. Here is him on COVID-19. You've probably already seen this video. COVID-19! COVID-19! <clears throat> yeah. You know the video. I'm not going to play the whole thing for you. But Kenneth Copeland, in, back in like, uh, was it May, March? Anyway, back, you know, early on, I think April, I'm trying to remember what exactly when it was, April or March, maybe. He says that he is, he has declared that, that, you know, COVID-19 is over and there's going to be a strong heat wave. And he prophesied a heat wave. He stood and he said, I quote, right, I stand in the office of the prophet of God. And then he declared that COVID-19 was over and there's going to be a big heat wave. Uh, there wasn't a heat wave. Justin Peters on his channel actually talk, actually shows the the um, the weather reports for the days following Kenneth Copeland's uh, blasphemous statements. And then shows the man's obviously a false prophet. Like it's, it's very clear he's a false prophet. In fact, I've said previously that 2020 has been a great year for false prophets because there's just been these people and they're largely on YouTube saying that they're prophets. You know, when, and taking advantage of people's worries and fears about what's going on this year and speaking not from the Lord, but from themselves. How do I know? Because what they say keeps coming not true. <laughs> it keeps being false. Kenneth Copeland's absolutely in this, in this category. Absolutely false prophet. But it's not just the, the false prophecy stuff. It's his teachings as well. Look at this. This is very recent. This, this was, I saw this from Revealing Truth, the YouTube channel. I'll give credit to the guy that brought it up and brought it to my attention. This is Kenneth Copeland in communion, I'm not exaggerating, in communion, adding his own blood to the blood of Jesus in communion. I'm going to play you the clip now. I'm not going to interrupt it. I'm going to just let it play. This is sick. This is evil. And it's in the name of Christ. And yeah, we need to know about it. Now, now let, let me illustrate something else. Now, our blood... Has, symbolically has been mixed here. Now at the communion table. Yes, sir. He oh, said this. Wrong. This is this is a, an expert issue. Hold on. I mean, I no, need to. No. Uh, how am I going to make this work? I need to go back to the beginning. Listen. Yeah, that's the second clip. I'll play that in a second. Here's the first clip. And it just skipped ahead. I need to remember 209. Reset. And there, I'm a tech genius. So, this is your cup. Yes, sir. This is my cup. My cup. So, Pretending to cut himself here. <clears throat> That's the cutting of the covenant. <clears throat> and then I would do the same. Now Jesus said, Take this cup. This is my blood. Wait, and what is he doing now? I'm sorry, I got to pause it for a second. The man is now pretending that this is communion. His blood mixed with this other guy's blood. And now he's like, this cup is the communion cup. It gets worse. Of the new covenant. Now we've mixed our blood. That's right. Which is his and which is mine. Neither. And we could never separate them. You can't separate that. All right. And the next clip I want to share with you is just to show you that, in fact, um, the uh, 
the, he is saying this is communion. If it wasn't clear already, like he's putting his blood mixed with that guy's blood and he's mixing it into communion. Why? Because Kenneth Copeland has a blurry vision between himself and God that he really doesn't see the difference here. And so um, in, and let me find the exact moment. I believe it was 209. No, I couldn't have been 209. Ah, there it is. There it is. All right, here it is. Look how nervous this now, is. Now, let, let me illustrate something else. Now, our blood has, symbolically has been mixed here. Now, at the communion table. Yes, sir. He said, this is my blood of the new covenant. All of you drink all of it. Judas had to drink that. What? What? Didn't want Judas. He's just weird. Yes, sir. So, and I want you to be this way every time you take communion, and you ought to take it a lot, a lot. This is Kenneth Copeland drinking a cup that he has symbolically filled with his own blood and the blood of some other dude. Then he tells you to do communion like this. This is this is satanic. Like I'm, this isn't and this isn't like a weird like oh it, I'm, it's satanic. Like it, listen to what he does next. Mm. Yes, sir. Now his blood mm. is in my body. Yes, sir. It's in there. His blood is mixed with my blood. The world needs to know that this man is not representing Christianity. And the best way for the world to know this is when people stop giving him money because it will dry up. If, you know, we, we the world can put up videos mocking and ridiculing him, but I think that Christians putting up content that denounces him is very appropriate and right because his content's all over the place. I remember when I was a kid and how... Um, I would watch, I was a teenager, and I would watch these guys on TBN. And TBN was was a mixed bag, to put it very nicely, but there was a lot of content on there that was blasphemous and ungodly and actually just harming the name of Christ in the world that was basically engineered to just get money from people. And that's what Kenneth Copeland's all about. We're going to talk about his money issues in just a second. Um, but, and I'll play a couple clips of him that you're going to, you're going to see how clear I think this is. But I remember at the time thinking... Just I'm sitting in my couch in the living room at my mom's house, and I'm like, man, I wish I had a voice to say something about these heretics or the, these these imposters, right? These money grubbing imposters. I just wish I had something I could do about it. And I realize I have that now. Okay, I have this wonderful opportunity to reach so many people online through YouTube and the different ministries online. So let me please nurse a decades long concern that these men need to be called out for who they are. Kenneth Copeland, I do not consider a Christian brother. I don't know what is going on in his head and his heart. People like me wonder if he's actually demon possessed. And that's like not a weird conspiratorial thing. It's like you look and you go, well, what else is it then if it's not that? Listen to his teaching on money. Kenneth Copeland, he's all about money. And I'm going to talk about why he's successful in a second. And it's, it's a sad, sad reality why he's actually successful. But here's Kenneth Copeland back in the day. If you have any question about the greed and narcissism that he nurses, um, this might point it out to you. Money! Come up to me now! Yeah. And then Creflo Dollar says, Dollar. <laughs> His name is Dollar. And different issue there. Um, money cometh to me now. He is... He is this is his mentality, right? Um, he, has, he has gone on record saying that in 2020, God promised him that his ministry would take in $300 million. Now, if you think, well, that's all just for ministry. No, the guy has a millions and millions of dollars of, uh, worth in his home. He's got this massive estate. He's got his own private airport, his own private airport, <laughs> and, if, and a group of uh, planes, jets, all that kind of thing. The man is obsessed with his own, ri with his own riches and wealth. He's claimed he's a billionaire at one point. Um, all that money has been taken, and we often think it's been taken off the backs of those who who um, are just purely the victims of Kenneth Copeland. And this is, this is where I want to say something that's kind of hard to say. If you've been a victim of Kenneth Copeland and you've dumped all your money at him, 
Part of it is you've just been deceived. Another part of it is that you're greedy like he is. And this is a sober wake-up call. People like Kenneth Copeland, the reason why some, and this might sound weird, but the reason why someone like me or like most of my audience would immediately shut off Kenneth Copeland and be like, what a wacky guy. And the reason why somebody else would be glued in and be sitting in money is because they have the same discontent with what God has given in their lives and the same desire for wealth that he presents on stage. Money cometh to me. When he says that, those who are offended are biblical Christians. Those who are excited are carnal. And that is why he is successful. He draws people to himself through lust of wealth and greed and power and all that kind of thing. In 1 Timothy 6, we we read about this. Let me, let me take us there, right? Because he quotes the Bible, but he doesn't actually teach it. But here's 1 Timothy 6, verse 5. And this is speaking about these, these false teachers, these ungodly people that affect the church. It says, they're men of depraved mind and deprived of the truth who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. That is just literally TBN when I was a teenager. I haven't watched TBN in years. I've heard they've changed their programming. Maybe it's better, at least partly better, and I want to be open to that, okay? But back in the day, it was just all of this. Um, godliness is a means of gain. Godliness is a means of gain. That's the idea. You're, you're going you're gonna to be receiving wealth. You're going to be receiving things. And what is the biblical teaching on this? Godliness actually is a means of great gain when accompanied by contentment. Well, money come to me now is the teaching of Kenneth Copeland. It's the opposite of contentment. He's discontent. He's desiring. He's lusting. His God is his belly. His God is his desires. Ironically, he says that God speaks to him through his belly. Like, yeah, there's actually a clip of him saying that as well. Verse 7 goes on to say, um, for we have brought nothing into the world, so we cannot take anything out of it either. If we have food and covering with these, we shall be content. This is Matthew 6. All these things will be added. Guess what? Those things are like food and covering. It's just basic human needs. We're not talking about riches and wealth. No, Jesus isn't saying it, it, it's God's will for you to be rich. And if you think it is, it's because you're greedy and you're discontent in Christ. This is, this is the big wake-up call. And I'm saying it harshly only because sometimes people I will find in my comments watching the videos occasionally not realizing that I was actually talking about an issue they're struggling with because we, we sometimes get into passive, you know, watching Christian content mode where we're not actually realizing like, wait a minute, that was about my situation. If you're drawn to Kenneth Copeland, you feel like you want to give money in order to get. It's because there's a carnal thing going on in your heart. There's something unchristian in the way that you're trying to live your life. And with these, we shall be content. Are you content with food and covering? If you, you know, if you don't even have food and you don't even have covering, don't be content. Like, pray, God, help me, supply for me, supply my needs. There's a sense in which you, you're, you're really seeking, you know, to change that scenario. But there's a godly contentment. Verse 9, but those who want to get rich. And notice this, the Bible here is not rebuking the rich. The Bible's rebuking those who want to get rich, which implies that they're not rich. The Bible here is rebuking those who don't have wealth, who are just, their desire is for wealth. Kenneth Copeland and his followers. Verse 9, those who want to get rich, yet Joel Osteen and his followers. Now, not everybody who follows Joel Osteen, right? There's a like massive number of people. But m some of the major appeal of these false teachers, of these different people, is and the area of their false teaching. Like Joel Osteen, as far as I know, still has the gospel, but there's a lot of major other issues going on there, major ones. And it's this, it's the thing of, you want to get rich? That's what every sermon is going to be about. God's, God's going to bless your business. God's going to bless you. The landfall is coming. Your doors are open and your prosperity is on its way. Look, those who want to get rich, they fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish and harmful desires. This is, this is the stuff that Kenneth Copeland stirs up and even some of the Joel Osteen teaching. It stirs up foolish and harmful desires in the heart of Christians so that now their hearts are about the things we're not to be about. Store up treasures in heaven for where your treasure is there, your heart will be. But they're about getting treasures on earth because their heart is on the earth, spiritually speaking. They fall into many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin and destruction. The prosperity message is promising financial prosperity. It, it, it never works out. Like People don't generally get that financial prosperity. What it ends up doing is bringing spiritual poverty to those people as they curb their hearts more and more towards greed and covetousness and all that. Then finally, verse 10, for the love of money. Not money. Money is not evil. The love of money is a root of all sorts of evil. 
Some, by longing for it, have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Do you see the heart of the apostle going like, oh, it's so sad. And that's Kenneth Copeland's ministry. Kenneth, Kenneth Copeland's ministry is turning people into this over and over and over again. Money lovers who have harmful desires, that who, who are heading towards ruin and destruction, who've wandered from the faith and they pierce themselves with many griefs. These things we are to flee from men and women of God, right? Pursue faith and righteousness and godliness, love, oh, gentleness, all these wonderful things. This is what we're to pursue. And this then shows you why it works. This is why Kenneth Copeland's thing works. And this is, it breaks my heart to realize it. I used to think all of his followers that were giving him money were just purely victims of his lies. But that's not entirely true. Partly they're victims of his lies and partly they're people who, whose God is their belly as well, right? Who, who, who aren't content with the grace and the, and the promises and the riches and inheritance we have in Christ. They want financial prosperity in this life and they're not content otherwise um this is at least a significant portion of his followers i think there's others who don't fit this bill at all i don't want to paint with too wide of a, a brush here but this definitely falls for many of them um, how do i know this well look at second peter second peter tells us the same thing i mean do you catch this the the, the details in scripture are so beautiful they give us all these insights into our lives. Well, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 14, it's going to tell us not only the wickedness of these false teachers, but some of the problems of the people who follow them. Now, here's the good news. If this is you, you can change. You just realize, wait a minute, something I was loving is something I should turn from. I'm going to have I'm going to turn to Christ who took up the cross, who had nothing, who looked forward to the future glory that was to come and was totally content with doing God's will and knowing God's uh, God relationally. And I mean, that's ex example wise. Jesus, of course, is God. <laughs> example wise, this is this is how Jesus is exampling life for me, that I'm content with knowing him and being in him and uh, the treasures that are coming because I just don't see this world and the riches of this world as actually being that valuable. Right. That's the key. Well, anyways, these these um, false teachers, they have eyes full of adultery. They're always want, want, want. I want that. I want this. I want that. I want this. This is something Kenneth Copeland stirs up. This is something Joel Osteen in a, a lower. Joel Osteen's not nearly as bad as Kenneth Copeland, but he stirs it up as well. Um, that never cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. Who are they enticing? This is commentary on their followers, not just the teachers. See, people gravitate towards the kind of teaching they want. When they go to false teachers, it's because there's something in them that wants false teaching. So they entice unstable souls, having a heart trained in greed. That is, oh my goodness, that is Kenneth Copeland. That That is so, it's this guy. Money! Come up to me now! Yeah, yeah, it's that guy. Accursed children forsaking the right way. They've gone astray, having followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. And this is Kenneth Copeland telling everybody in COVID-19, you know, make sure you don't stop your offerings. Even if you lost your job, you have to st still keep offering. Who's he talking to? He's talking to his own followers because he has to have that 300 million mark this year. The sinful, wicked fool. And his followers, they're reflecting their own depravity in the teachers that they heap up to themselves. That is the rebuke. I don't need to make a video for Kenneth Copeland. He's not going to watch it. It's a video for his followers. You have fallen into the love of the wages of unrighteousness or you've fallen into the desire for other things. You've fallen into discontentment and a heart trained in greed as you listen to this teaching and soak it up. It's time to cut ties with all these teachers. Verse 16 goes on. It says, but he received a rebuke for his own transgression. This is Balaam. For a mute donkey speaking with the voice of a man. Restrain the madness of the prophet. These are springs without water and mists driven by a storm for whom the black darkness has been reserved. They're springs without water. What's a spring without water? It's like the you, you get to a spring. It's the promise of refreshing, but without the water that refreshes. They, they, they try to present like they have the gospel and they have Christianity and they have all these truth, but they're not actually refreshing people. They're redirecting people towards carnal greeds. Verse 18, for speaking out arrogant words of vanity. Oh my goodness, the arrogant words of vanity. Can I play with you another arrogant word of vanity? Here you go. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one 
100% for you. 100% on your and my side. 100% with everything he has, everything God is, everything God owns, everything God ever will have belongs to you if Jesus is your Lord. Arrogant words of vanity. Everything God is belongs to you. Everything God has belonged. Now we have an inheritance. So there is, see, there's a truth in Christianity that you could try to fall on. And this is what defenders of Copeland will do. They'll be like, well, we do have an inheritance. We're co-heirs with Christ. Our identity is in Christ. Don't you believe that, Mike? Yeah. But if you can't tell that what that man said is different than the biblical teaching, then what on earth is wrong with you? Like, where are you just getting totally derailed from the glory of God being, being unique, from God not sharing his glory with others? This is, there's a problem with false teachers and those who follow them mirror in a lesser fashion generally. They mirror those same problems in themselves. That's why they follow those guys. And these arrogant words of vanity when they responded to with applause from the audience instead of at least walking out, right? <laughs> if not standing up and publicly and openly denouncing the man, at least walking out. If it's not responded that way, then, oh, my heart hurts for those people. What, what are you doing? You're piercing yourselves through with many sorrows. So they speak out arrogant words of vanity. They entice by fleshly desires, by sensuality, those who barely escape from the ones who live in error. That is those who are, in, I mean, I'm putting my own terminology here. This is like those who are just like barely Christians, okay? They're like, they're Christians, but they're, they're Christianity's paper thin. And then they fall into, because they have a lot of unsanctified life, they fall into the tendency to, to heap up false teachers like Kenneth Copeland, right? So Kenneth Copeland, how does he get people to follow him? Well, he speaks arrogant words of vanity, like in the video we just saw, and he entices people by fleshly desires, right? Money come to me now. You're going to get this. You're going to get the property. You're going to get the wealth. You're going to have the power. You're going to even be able to, you control the weather, right? This is a teaching that him and his wife have said they control the weather. He boasts about making tornadoes go up um, into, the, into the sky. Um, by sensuality, those who barely escape from the ones who live in error. Then listen to this. This is Kenneth Copeland in a nutshell, promising them freedom while they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by what a man is overcome, by that he is enslaved. And it is the wealth, it is the desire for riches, it is all these things. I'm not jealous of Kenneth Copeland's money. It's nothing. It's fuel for the fire. He, it's, 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 he's been overcome, he's been enslaved. And he's seeking to bring his chains into the lives of other people. It just is that way. And so we need more people being honest about Kenneth Copeland. Uh, my message to those who follow Kenneth Copeland is this. Please run from this man. He will ruin you. He already is ruining you. You probably don't even realize how carnal some of the things that you think are Christian actually are. Read the Bible. Stop watching Kenneth Copeland. And please get yourself some good, good biblical teachers, good, solid teachers that are out there. My message, in addition to that, for those who, who want to defend Kenneth Copeland, you're not open to me, you're defending him. All I'm going to say is this. If you, if you honestly can't tell the difference between biblical Christianity, faithful pastoring, and Kenneth Copeland, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I really don't. And may my, may my shock be enough to let you realize that if you have any respect for me and the many hours I've put into studying the word and trying to preach and teach carefully and trying to be serious about having a, an honest Christian life, if you have any respect for me in there, realize this, that I am just amazed that you don't immediately realize that this guy is not, is not Christianity and that he's actually presenting something that the Bible rebukes and warns us of. Um, I just, if you can't tell, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. And then I have one more message for skeptics, non-believers who maybe you've clicked on this and you're, and you like legitimately, you realize that some of the biggest like names in Christianity, because they have the most money, because they often are fleecing the flock. That's why that they're like, they're well known like Kenneth Copeland, not because he's a great pastor, but because he just gets so much money. He can put his face everywhere. Um, you're like seriously thinking like, why would I believe any Christian? Why would I believe anybody's genuine or sincere? Look, there's a lot. In fact, my experience meeting many, many pastors, seeing many ministries over the years is that most of us are pretty sincere. 
And it's the guys who have massive ambitions, heap up money, and try to put their faces everywhere. And you might be like, well, that's you, Mike. Well, I know that's not me, but God will judge me if it is. Um, and I don't heap up masses of money anyway, so I guess I'm off the hook there. Um, I'm just I'm just saying, like, I'm, I'm still uh, driving, you know, my 16-year-old car, you know. So, um, But at any rate, the... Um, uh, the reality is that the, the 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 counterfeit like Kenneth Copeland doesn't discount the authentic and the authentic isn't even ultimately me the authentic is Jesus Christ I'm not the perfect example of Christianity but I am at least an example of Christianity whereas Kenneth Copeland's not but the authentic is Jesus and I'd encourage you skeptic to go to Jesus go read the New Testament see what Jesus did how he laid aside heaven how he took up and, and lived a poor life poverty Right? He had nowhere to lay his head, he says. And he gave everything he had. He su suffered and died on a cross to be punished for what other people did. There as he's dying, he cries out, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. This is the loving, self-sacrificial, heavenly-minded example that Christians are to follow. This is the authentic. And when you see these examples, uh, you know, and, and, they, and they get up in the, in the mainstream media big time. You just have to recognize those are the counterfeits, right? Those are the counterfeits. Why? Because they're not living consistently with Jesus and he's definitely the authentic. So Kenneth Copeland doesn't represent Christ and he shouldn't in your mind if you're a skeptic, if you're an unbeliever, if you're someone who's been confused by these things. Jesus is my authentic. I, as much as I follow him, I represent that. Wherever I fail, I'm not representing Christ. And with that in mind, you realize, wow, Christianity's not Kenneth Copeland. Thank God. So we need more people standing up and speaking up. And please, listen, if you know somebody who's followed Kenneth Copeland's teachings and you don't want to ruffle their feathers, I'm asking you, send them this video anyways. Or find another video that you think does it well and send them the video anyways. As far as Kenneth Copeland goes, my hope and heart for him is repent, repent, repent before it's too late. This is no minor error. Reserved, it seems to me, reserved for you is the blackness of darkness forever. And, um, and, I, and, and God is just in that judgment. Because look at the harm you're doing. And yeah, you oh, but Mike, he preaches the gospel. But Mike, he, he, he helps Christians. He helps Christ. If you can't tell the difference, I don't know what else to say to you. And that's all I got. I will see you guys Monday for an actual Bible study, verse by verse, through the gospel of Mark. Thank you so much for joining. I have nothing else to say except...